<laughs> Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Nick. Hey, guys. Nick. Nice tell, to meet you. Tell me a little bit about yourself, brother. Um, I am a dude that just lives in Florida. Um, the best, it, the best <laughs> state on earth. The It's definitely the most interesting state on earth. It's, Have you looked up your birthday than anything with Florida man after it? I I did that a while back because that was a thing for a little bit there. And I, I can't remember what it was, but there's always so many weird things. There's there's one radio station down here. They play this one segment that's called um, like Florida nudes or, or something like that. It's anything that, that gets reported in a police report that involves someone naked in public. And how, some how, of the stories how often is that a thing <laughs> like it's apparently daily well i don't know if it's actually just in florida it may be from from the u.s as a whole but you know sometimes it's florida people but apparently that's a thing there there's a lot of nude instances across america every day one of the ones that i heard recently was this woman was trying to like sneak into a restaurant or something like that and she was trying to come through the ceiling and she came halfway through one of the ceiling tiles and she was wearing a dress so like everything came up and she's just hanging from the ceiling like naked <laughs> i don't know what happened in florida that shifted that like i had family that <laughs> lived in florida it was known as like the golfing vacation hot spot like it was this I mean, I know they still love to golf and drink like an Arnold Palmer tea, but it's like, when did oh, yeah. it become so nuts? Like, well, there's I just so many people. There's so many different people that live here now. Like, there's so many different parts of Florida that are considered redneck. Because the Florida is still considered the South, but we also have a lot of people that are here from like Massachusetts and like Northern states. You know, they've got their road rage issues, stuff like that. So it's just. There's a lot of different types of people here, and sometimes it just makes for really interest. You know, because Florida is also a lot of people the the drug stuff in Florida. Uh, you know, that's a big thing. That's so, what when I looked up my birthday on and Florida man after it, it was on New Year's Eve. A dude tried to rob a fast food place because they wouldn't accept his payment, and his payment was weed. I was like, I don't think <laughs> that's gonna work anywhere but Taco Bell. Like maybe Taco Bell, the guy in the drive-thru is like, yeah, I'll take the gram for the Quesarito crunch wrap. But I don't think it's happening when it comes to like <laughs> McDonald's at all. It's so funny you say that. It's so true. Every time I go through Taco Bell and you talk to that person, that, that motherfucker is that shit. They're look, they're they're attached to KFC where I'm at in Ocean <laughs> City, Maryland. They're attached to KFC. So KFC Taco Huts. Yeah, but what the weird thing is, is like their drive throughs open like until like 4 a.m., but KFC's is closed. So like they have the menu with the taco. I'm like, well, I, can I get not a taco? Can I get a biscuit? They're like, sorry, KFC's closed. It's like it's the same building. You're not even <laughs> switching shirts. So don't give me that shit. You can throw a biscuit <laughs> in my bag. That's all it takes. It's like when they won't give you breakfast at 1025. That you got to wait till 1030. That was <laughs> McDonald's biggest slip up was making breakfast an all day thing. That's too much power for any man. I'm telling you, if you can't get your ass up at 10 or whatever to go get a biscuit, <laughs> then you don't deserve to get it 24 seven. If it's 1 PM, you're not getting a McGriddle. You're getting a normal thing. I, I mean, I agree. I, I could eat breakfast all day, but past a certain point, I agree. I think it's I spent like, I guess, most of my childhood, like I would be excited when we would have breakfast for dinner. But then now that I'm older, I'm like, wait a minute, you're just, you couldn't, you couldn't cut, fuck, fucking cook anything. Like, that's what it was. <laughs> like breakfast for dinner was like, oh, the easiest thing to make is breakfast. It's like quick. Yeah, no, it's true. And it, it's one of those things. Everybody loves it. So it's like, you can't complain about it, but it's also still weird. It's like, oh, you're man. also still a little lazy. We're having French toast and it's the sun's down. We're having now, French toast and the sun is down. What are you supposed to do in the morning? Are you going to eat the same thing that you just ate for dinner? That I, I can tell you from people that have taken a funnel cake home and thinking it was going to be good the next day. It's not good the next day. It's never <laughs> good the next day. The only thing that's good like any time is pizza. You can have pizza for breakfast the next day. 
Oh, dude, pizza is our staple for for D and D night. Uh, every every game we have pizza and beer, uh, and that's so no 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 finger sandwiches. I always wonder. <laughs> like, I feel like a D and D is really professional when they start pulling out like the homemade thing. But I feel like all of them have a tradition. Like D and D, every group I've talked to so far either does a podcast about it or plays it. They all have something they bring to the table. What do you bring to the table? Are you dungeon master? I am for campaign two. Uh, so we have one campaign that's 12 episodes um, that's done. Uh, and, act, and one of our other players is the dungeon master for that. Um, but he's also our audio editor. So he does all of the editing of the podcast and adding in sound effects and cutting out pauses and stuff like that. So it was kind of a lot for him to have to plan sessions to, to lead us through and then afterwards do all of the audio work. Um, so for campaign two, that was another thing. We also only released episodes once a month for last uh, for first campaign because of that reason, because of how much work it is. So for campaign two, I'm taking over as the dungeon master. He's still retaining his editing uh, role and we're gonna try to release episodes every two weeks. Uh, see if we can campaign? do it a little bit faster. How is your campaign different or better than the first one? Um, we had some time to learn uh, for, for one thing. So, you know, our first campaign was 12 episodes. It was once a month. So we did a year of, of D&D once a month. We didn't always play once a month. We kind of pre-recorded ahead several episodes. Um, so there are a couple months where, you know, we didn't actually play, but we had an episode recorded. Uh, but we did a whole year's worth, basically. And you know, the whole time, we're learning how to use our mics better every episode. We're learning how to use our audio equipment better every episode. So going into campaign two, it's just better in the general sense of we have more knowledge of what we're doing. Um, I can't necessarily vouch that my story is going to be better than Richard's, who is our, our DM1. I don't know if our characters are going to be better than the characters we had in campaign one. All I can do is hope that people are gonna love it just as much, even though it is a little different, obviously, because um, I was one of the characters in, in the first season. So I know sometimes it might be a little weird for someone maybe that listened to all 12 of our first episodes and then now all of a sudden everything's a little different. You know, we might have some people drop off. We might have some new people come in. Um, all we can really do is just kind of cross our fingers and hope that if people liked what we did before, hopefully they'll like what we're doing now. Do you feel like you try and incorporate D and D into your actual like real life scenarios and stuff? Cause I'm like, I really like the factor of role-playing games is they usually everybody's first character is the one they try and make as much of themselves as possible into every single action or course, like games like fallout or Skyrim, where you're able to choose choices and the choices kind of groove or groove your past to whichever direction you're going to go throughout the game. I feel like it makes life a little bit better when you're like buying something at the store. Do I want to get this item? Do I want to pay <laughs> with exact change and make it like kind of a perfect scenario for the person? Do I want to pay with too much change to the point where the person has to give you change back? And then there's this more of an awkward reaction or do I want to get in and out and pay with my card? You know, it's funny. There was a, a, a small bit of time for a while that I carried around a D 20, which is that, the, the famous dice from role-playing games um, that most people roll for their fate chance of a what 20 happens. A 20-sided die. Right. Uh, and there was a, a small bit of time where I was like, you know what, maybe sometimes I'll just roll this and see what happens and then make a life decision out of it. But it they did that with fitness, dude. I work at a gym <laughs> and they have a, they have a cube or a 20-sided die thing that you throw and each one has like a certain uh, workout you have to do on it. Nobody See? wants the 20, <laughs> like the 20 burpees or like the 20 pull-ups. It's always that when it's on either end, like those are the two worst scenarios and all the rest and like around it are just kind of like easier ones, like five push-ups or something like that. I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to get to 20 burpees, but it always lands right? on that. And that's exactly what I learned very quickly doing that was, oh my God, fate sucks. 
<laughs> I, I want to make decisions for myself. <laughs> and you hear like a voice in your head just go, it's not the answer you want, but it's the answer you need. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not feeling this one at all. It's like nope. when I, sh <laughs> I shook the magic eight ball so many times as a kid and it would be like, ask again later. I'm like, well, when am I going to get my damn answer? It's been 20 years. And then when you finally do get the answer, it's always no, or, <laughs> or all maybe that, all that build up for nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I, no, I learned very quickly that, no, you, you just, just make your own choices and then see what happens afterwards rather than, than letting fate decide. It's fun for the game. It really is fun for games because um, you just kind of never know what happens. Like in our campaign too, we have a character. I literally made the character to be an almost a throwaway character. It, it was literally just someone to kind of be annoying, but kind of funny. Like a bard. Right. Um, and because of how the dice rolled at one point, this character now lives in infamy as someone who's done something in this country that almost nobody, nobody ever has uh, just because of how the dice rolled. And now this character who I created to possibly maybe even die at some point is now like super famous. And there's a whole like Coliseum of people chanting their name and stuff like that. And you just kind of never know what's going to happen in a story that involves chance, which is great for a story, not so great for real life. Well, okay. Well, with the character, because my favorite thing about it is kind of the voice acting part aspect, depending on how far your group really goes with it. And with a podcast, usually the people go with the voices, go with a whole different persona. What are some voices that you're able to do? Um, the <laughs> One of the favorite voices of our group is our annoying character from from campaign two so um his name is gilroy and he talks like this and he's really excited about everything and he loves he's just so excited about life life is wonderful he sounds like <laughs> the guy from the bbc when he's narrating the freaking nature documentary and this is the penguins and this is the penguins they, they take a spin into the lake <laughs> oh he's he's just he's an 18 year old kid he's right out of adventuring high school basically trying to to go Still out and make trying him. to find himself <laughs> yeah so it's he's just your typical <laughs> hit, hit the puberty a little too late <laughs> and they just kind of they've fallen in love with this guy and he's still annoying but he's he's a pretty fun character i think at this point for something i literally created in the moment just to have to fill a space it's kind of like when you play D and D, you gotta envision yourself like you're being in a film that's based on like an old scenario. Like when they were filming Lord of the Rings, like trying to design what voice would your character make? Your character can't just be like, "Well, we're going to go to the mountain and find a ring. You're gonna throw the ring in the lava. You're gonna." It's like no, you need to be like, "You shall not pass." <laughs> like you need this whole like bravado, depending on what your character is. And I think that's like the cool part because you could be a bard, supposed to be like a high pitch kind of like annoying singing type guy, or you could be a wizard, supposed to sound all mystical. I'm like, why don't we flip it? Why don't we make the wizard? Sp I don't know, sound like tiny in every film any person that's named tiny in a film has like a really high voice like you're not afraid of me it's like hold on a second you're eight feet tall oh that's funny yeah I, you know there is a lot of push for that right now that kind of stuff right now actually uh being on twitter in the D, &D like community there's a, a a very large part of the the community right now is like quote on you know, pushing boundaries uh so like making non-traditional characters. So you've got like a big, gigantic, muscly orc, um, but he likes flowers and does magic. He doesn't like to punch people. What's you wrong know, with stuff liking like that. flowers? There's always that. <laughs> There's always that one movie where it's like, he's the outcast. What does he do? All he does is make shadow puppets. Like it's fucking oh. annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a character that, have you seen, have you ever seen, um, have you seen Dragon Ball Z? Um, is that a question? <laughs> I, I knew the answer to the question. I just had to ask. I grew up on Kami House, bro. Like I saw a person in the store was wearing one of the Dragon Ball Z t-shirts and it, it was a chick. She was hot. She was my age. 
but she was with her mom and I walked up and I'm like, nice hoodie, commie house. And she goes, what? I'm like, commie house. And she goes, what are you talking about? This is supposed to be Dragon Ball Z. And I'm like, oh, oh no, oh, no, you were so close to being a love of my life. That's some sad stuff right there. Hurt. That's a sad story, dude. God. <laughs> um, so you're, you're familiar talking, with Android 16 then, right? Yes. Okay. So I kind of had a, a little inspiration from him for one of my characters once. It was a, my character was a, a half Goliath. So he was kind of like a big dude. Yeah. He wasn't gi- super ginormous, but he was larger than normal human men. Um, and he was, he had a, a bird watching thing because Android 16 likes like birds and little animals and stuff like that. So that was always his, th- his thing. Oh, I love birds. Look at the little birdie. <laughs> it sounds like every like muscle bound guy and all. what's that a uh, show he plays um oh his voice is pretty fa- i swear every time i'm doing a podcast now i'm always like mentioning a show but i never <laughs> remember the name of it you mean this voice yeah the guy yeah. that kind of talks like this a little bit yes uh everybody always kind of says i talk like and when i do this it's it's the guy that plays gronk cronk yes in uh Nimper's new group uh oh. he also plays the tick in the animated the tick series if i'm not mistaken dude uh, i can never i can never remember his name though can you uh, please sell me cologne as that guy <laughs> what we've got here is a nice musk of skunk it's beautiful it'll really really <laughs> keep the the pedophiles away just one spritz and your kid is safe at the bus stop <laughs> You could have went anywhere, and you had to say <laughs> pedophile. That is perfect. Oh. It's a hot topic. It's a hot topic these days. <laughs> uh, I love doing voice uh, impressions. I think the only one I'm really, really super good at is my Christopher Walken. But, like, oh. I can do, like, a Don Corleone. Uh, <laughs> my buddy said if I practice hard enough, I could really nail a Jerry Seinfeld, but I hate that guy so much. <laughs> His voice is too, like, whiny and high pitch. But I'm would, not a Seinfeld fan either, so I, I got you on that one. The bass intro, it's like dropping a bass down the stairs with the beat, 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 beat. It's like, <laughs> all right, well, somebody does not know how to play that well. Um, but, we hear your Christopher Walken. Oh, God. I don't think I – you did it on the spot. That was that was bravo to you. Um, <laughs> oh, my. This is tragic news. I had wasn't planning on a trip to go to the store today. But apparently, a trip to Walmart's in my future. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like it. Uh, some, of, some of my favorite thing about animated movies is because pe- some people's voices are so distinct. Yeah. And if you don't know they're in a movie, and then you catch their voice coming out of one of those cartoons, like, it's so wonderful to me. It's all uh, about like in, uh, um, Family Guy. Yeah, Family Guy, any of the, the Rick and Morty, when you hear someone's voice in one of those it, guys. Morty, Morty. Morty. <laughs> I actually never realized how many other shows I'd heard Rick and Morty's voice in. The the guy that does his like um I was watching Adventure Time the other day. Yeah. And he does lemon. so he does a bunch of voices on there. Was, oh my God. Um my cousin, he only can say the the with the lemon, the unacceptable. He can scream it. He did it like he's in his thirties. So like I'll just randomly walk into the house and he'll be like, Unacceptable. I'm like, What are you doing, dude? Like He's like, I was watching Adventure Time. I was like, you're a grown-ass man. It's, it's kind of scary. My kid wanted to watch it, and I'm going through, and like, I'm like, holy fuck. Yeah. Some intense shit for a six-year-old. TV shows and cartoons, they just have evolved to the point of not giving a shit anymore. I was playing There's a New Game out, like it's supposed to be some samurai game, and they made it authentic Japanese by getting actual Japanese like voices to play. Like You're supposed to play the game in Japanese. You can switch it to English, but it loses the effect of the game. And I was playing it, and I was like slicing up these people, and blood was going everywhere. And then like my buddy's stepdad comes in and goes, that's a lot of blood. And I'm like, yeah, back in the day, it used to be really hard to get a game. <laughs> you know, you had to be 18 yeah. to get the game. Now, if you could be seven years old buying this stuff and they don't care. Well, no, people don't. I, I just recently, I just moved into a new apartment in the last couple of months and I finally got real internet. So it's been nice. I've been actually able to, to do some online gaming, which is something I haven't done in a while. And it's, it's, I was on Call of Duty and I got the headphones on 
and it it really is that trope of like there's this got to be kid not gone through puberty yet under 10 you motherfucker fuck you and he's like come at me one on one i'm going to clap that ass I'm like where is your parent <laughs> he tossed out clap that ass <laughs> like i don't even exactly know what that means like <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like I remember being that age and playing and how upset I would get over like just trying to argue with someone that would just be so low key where it was like, oh, sure, kid, your mom. Oh, uh-huh, sure. Uh-huh. And like you're going like all your best jokes in your arsenal are getting <laughs> tossed out. But I'm like, that's the problem with paying online now where everything's getting paid on. Like I just went pre-ordered Assassin's Creed. So by the time Ooh. this episode comes out, I've already been binging on it for the past couple of days. But when I went to go pre order the game, the guy goes, yeah, we're closing. Um, like GameStop's closing for good. We're only opening up like six hours a day now. And eventually this one's going to be shut down. Like most of the GameStops, they're going to transfer it all online. And I'm like, there's the issue. A kid that's 10 years old that shouldn't be playing a game. Like I had to trick my grandparents into getting me Sims. And my grandmom's <laughs> like, what's, why is it? Oh, it has blood it has blood in it and like the game start guys like it also has sex it also has this type of stuff and i'm like just get it i'm not going to be doing any of that stuff and then i just want to build a house with the vending i want to build a house yeah <laughs> I, literally that's what i wanted to do was buy a house and get a vending machine in the living room that's my whole goal it's like when you get grand theft auto like i just want to drive the cars around mom i just want to follow it's a- all the traffic rules <laughs> Garrett no, Auto is set up for you not to do that. I tried <laughs> one time. I had a person hit my car and then cops came after me. I'm like, all right, I see. This is just set up for me to break the law. It, it's been a long time thing, though. Like even back when I was younger and they started having things where you could you could purchase um, certain things through your phone, through like text messaging. Like I would do that all the time as a kid. And then either your parents come up to you at, when the phone bill comes in. What the fuck is this? It's and like, like when I, was... I figured out on demand wasn't free. It was buy <laughs> movies. And this was the age when it was like $6.99. So I bought like 10 movies on a weekend. And then next <laughs> thing you know, the bill came in. And my parents were like, what the fuck? Where you, you watched The Omen? And then you watched <laughs> – little miss sunshine and then he watched the south park movie and i'm like yo it was a rough day it was a day <laughs> uh, I, I didn't know we paid for that i thought you just hit accept and it was like sure well and now it's like I, I i feel like people don't it probably happens so much now i wonder how many people notice because most most charges for things now are you know like a couple bucks i'll you tell know, you right like now this i just got my bank statement like I think this was a problem like three days ago and I was getting charged for something I haven't played since I was 2014. Like fucking RuinScape was still charging me for a game I haven't played in such a long time. And I was like, you were taking $15.99 a month from my bank account? Like what? Like I was wondering, what, you don't know with all the things you sign up for. Eventually, your payments, like you're like, why is it like a hundred dollars getting taken out every time? Yeah, no, I I have experienced that too, and had to. And you, it it really sucks too because you go back and you try to fight with most of these companies, and most of them have rules like um, they may give you back one month, but they're not giving you back all the months that you haven't played. Yeah, it's it's. It's whenever I get a call about that and it's like a fraud thing or if it's like a fake call, I always just do voice impressions. Like that is how I get through that pain of dealing with that and also the pain of like something like that happens. If I'm on tech support, if my internet goes out, like I'm talking to someone like, you know, like, you know, treat me with such disrespect and this respect <laughs> was unnecessary. Like I, I got to like, try that the next time for me. You got to fix my internet right now before I get real mad. <laughs> Can you? All right, let's do a scene. I want you to be the network provider. So your media com or whatever for my, my internet. I'm trying oh, to get God. it back on. And I'm going to, do you want, which, what, what, what impression? <laughs> I want you to do that impression. You get to pick one I got to do. I could do an <laughs> accent too. Oh man. Oh man. Why don't you be, why don't you be uh, that, that dad that doesn't actually know how the internet stuff works. He just thinks it's supposed to plug in and work. 
Okay. You know, the dad that can't fix the VCR. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. You started off. You're the, you're the network provider. Hello, sir. Thank you for calling WTFZRQL3. We are ple pleased to provide you with internet service today. How can I help you? Oh, how you doing there? I am uh, trying to get uh, my internet working. I don't know what accent that was. <laughs> I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to get my internet working. The game's on in uh, 15 minutes there, and um, I, I need to watch my bears. Oh, the bears, yes. Uh, very important hockey team to the United States. Um, of course, sir. Uh, we, we would very, very unfortunate that your internet is not working right now. Have you, have you made sure that the lights on the machine are on? Uh, do, do you see lights? Well, right now I'm in the kitchen. I see the lights on my microwave. I am cooking up a quesarito for the game. So if you could fix my internet, I was told to just call and you were going to be able to handle it. Yeah, I, I am going to be able to handle it, sir, but it is, I'm not actually in your house. You do know this, correct? No, I, I really don't. Honestly, I'm a bit senile. I thought this is still 1982 when the bears were at their prime. Apparently not so. All right, let's just make this easy, sir. Take your, take your bowl of salsa and chips and go into the living room. Sit down in front of your television. Tell me once you've done that. Hang on a second. This might take a couple of trips because I got more. I also got wings on the table and I got a couple of two liters for when the buddies come over. Hang sure, on. no problem. I, it's not like I have any other customers waiting in line on the phone. All right, cool. So there's no wait times. I'm number one in your eyes, huh? <laughs> the customer is always right, sir. All right, let me sit down with my dyed Fanta. All right, I'm at my TV. I'm seeing static on the screen and a little thing comes up that says no cable provided. Where do I go from here? I had bought the HD a la Hapa, but apparently it's not hopping onto my channels. So in order to make the internet hop from the box to your television, there is a little, little black square that sits directly underneath it. Do you see the black square? I'm colorblind, so you have to be specific. Sir, I'm going to have to transfer you to management. Okay, are they going to be able to help me, or is it going to be an even more difficult task? Uh, actually, sir, what I'm, what I'm seeing here now is that service seems to be out in your general area. Uh, we're going to set up a, a, a time for a technician to come into the house, and they'll get it working for you. Can you make sure it's a Bears fan so he understands the complexity of this situation? Because I need to watch the game. It's on in 10 minutes. Absolutely, sir. We, we will schedule that, uh, and you'll get an email. What the hell is an email? <laughs> I literally was going to toss out Hank Hill. Like, what the hell? What like, the hell? <laughs> <laughs> holy crap. That is literally the answer they give you, too, is there seems to be an outage in your area. I had my internet right? go out the other day, and the woman literally told me, I'm about to get off my shift. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I really, I, I feel you on that. I really do. But I need your help. And then there was a five minute thing of silence where she just goes, <laughs> did it come back on? No, nothing <laughs> changed. We just sat in silence. Is your shift about to end now? Is that why you did that? It's like that, they hold all the power. That whole racket is just a whole thing. Like where I lived before here, I mean, and they do it everywhere. You only have the choice between like one internet provider or paying like $300 for satellite. And we had Frontier, I think it was. And I kind of lived out in what was considered the country. Um, and we did, we only had, it's 2020, we had DSL. I had to have a phone line to have the internet. And it was, it was like $60 a month and I only got three, up to three megabits per second. 
I, I don't I don't get it. I don't know if it's just because of my state. Maryland is just like it, all it is is extreme or Comcast or Mediacom or whatever the hell they're called. It's the only one around here. But my grandparents live in literally the middle of Nowhereville, Delaware, out in the country. And their internet is perfect 24-7. They have a fucking landline that almost gave me a damn heart attack the other day. I was sitting there and I heard the phone go off. I was like, what the fuck was that? And she's like, still the, answer, exist. the answering machine will get it. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Oh, like, that's funny. And then you hear like, ring 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 and then it goes to the answer machine hi you have reached the whatever residence uh leave your name number and i'll get back to you as soon as possible and then it's just a beep and then all you hear is the person hang up i'm like because who the fuck leaves a message nobody yeah well, i mean I, most of the people calling you now are just spam calls anyway yeah i had some dude call me like the middle of the night like 1 a.m he goes all right who the fuck is this number? i'll give you his voice okay here's his voice ready I don't know who the hell this damn number is keeps calling me every day. It's eight calls today you have called me. I'm calling you back. What do you want? I said, dude, it's a number that got my number and then called you from it. It's not actually me calling you. It's a spam call. Oh, buddy, I'm sorry about that, man. How are you doing? And I'm like, it's <laughs> 1 a.m. Shut the hell Jake, up and hang goodbye. up. <laughs> like, geez, I've only had one really good service call where a woman had called me when I was in the middle of work. And it's always at like when I'm either bringing home groceries or it's always when I'm just sitting down in the toilet. And I'm like, no, I'm taking a shit. I, I know you're looking for <laughs> Jessica, but I'm not Jessica. Um, but then I remember somebody called me when I was at work at the hotel and I was like, you know, just finished, got done a room. So I sat down on the bed for a minute, was checking my phone, number calls. I pick it up immediately, like, real fast answer. And it's like, hi, we're taking a survey based on the CDC. And I'm like, look, I'm tired of your fucking spam calls. Uh, take me off the list. And the woman goes, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. If you're at work, I can call back at a later time. And I said, oh, it's a real person. She's like, yes, this is a real person. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, since I just kind of berated you and now I'm a piece of shit, can you just tell me what you <laughs> called about? Well, we're doing a survey based on the CDC. This was about three years ago. Um, based on brain injuries and the kind of the causation of it. And like, she had a couple quick questions for me, but I cut her off and I was like, before I answer your survey, which I will do, can you answer me one thing? She goes, okay, what is it? I said, you said you're with the CDC. She goes, yes. I said, okay, my best friend, his uncle was involved in the CDC. And they said that they have a training in their training manual. There's a thing on how to deal with infectious diseases, but also zombies. Is that true? Or was that bullshit he told me when I was 10? And he goes, or no, she goes on the phone. She goes, I'm not at liberty to disclose that information. I was like, that's all the answer I needed. And I hung up <laughs> went on with my day. Uh, I actually, we got, uh, I, I don't get too many spam calls anymore. I don't know if it's something that Verizon does now. Um, but I don't, I don't get very many of them anymore. And I don't, I don't answer my phone really anymore. That's a thing. Like, I, I, if I don't know the number now, I usually just don't answer it. If they don't call me uh, four times in a row, then it's not important. Right, exactly. exactly. Or if you don't text me afterwards. If you call me and then text me, okay, that's fine. And I think that sucks when someone voice texts. Because then, like, it gets everything you've ever said wrong. Like, in <laughs> such an, I don't know what it is about texting, but when I read it, like, with certain people, it comes off always as aggressive. Like someone's yeah. like, oh, pick out what you want for Christmas. And I'm like, don't fucking tell me what to do. Like it just <laughs> reading it through text comes out so aggressive. I, it, it, yeah, that's a real problem too. And, and I, I wonder if a lot of that is just us though, yeah. as the person reading it. I got a lot of aggression. Uh, I, I think that's a lot of problem too, is people just kind of automatically, I think, see the glass half empty part of, of texting. Um, I'm, I'm guilty of it all the time. Um, well, your phone tries its best to analyze what your voice is, but it can't sense human emotion. So it's like when it does, if you finish it like abruptly, like your last part of your sentence abruptly like that, it'll put an exclamation point. So it's like you could be driving and having a million things going on. Like that's why eventually, like if I'm trying to set up something for the podcast, I just voice it. 
I've given it a voice message where it's a recording and then send it. Because me trying to voice text while I'm driving or something, it's like, yeah, if you want to check out the podcast and listen to an episode, let me know. If you want to be on, let me know. That comes off so aggressive to some people. We're like, well, you wanted me on the show. It's like, I, I do. But I'm also trying to drive, <laughs> trying to listen to some Post Malone on my uh, radio. Also, at the same time, nobody crosses the fucking street anymore without look like no nobody looks anymore. It just happened the other day. I almost hit five people. They're all going to a yard sale. Like, all, all going to get me some nice uh, shiny things. And then they start walking over without even looking. I had to slam on my brakes like, geez, like what yeah. where'd the common sense go? I, I, living in Florida, I have a lot of problems with the drivers here, much less the people that walk around. Like most of our roads here are multi-lane with like center dividers and like people never go down to the crosswalks. They just, they wait for their attempted openings and try to go across like six lanes of traffic. Then you get the asshole that goes really slow across the street, knowing that you're not going to hit them. I'm just like, I'm waiting for it's like a purge thing where like we have a day where nobody gets kind of known on it, just a few people and it spreads by word of mouth where it's like purge day. So the dudes like cross check, you ain't going to hit me like they're ducks. Like they're geese crossing the street with no shits given towards whether you need to slow down or speed up, cause an accident. They don't care. I had to miss a person at one point Um, in Ocean City. It's a beach town. So we get a lot of tourists from Florida everywhere that come down here and people just cross in like the middle of highway traffic. And I remember I was driving, coming off the bridge and merging into the main lane. And a person just went right across the side. I had to turn my car and the person behind me literally right onto my back tire. And, you know, we had to end up pulling over. I ended up getting out of the car Uh like this mother, like I got out of the car pissed. And I get out of the car, fucking, he was my 57th episode of my podcast. It was my, it was a person (laughs) I worked with. I was like, oh, Jess. I was like, Jesse, he goes, what's up, dude? I'm like, yo, we just like, that. that's so crazy that we just got into a car accident. He goes, yeah. He goes, um, so do you want to take a picture of my insurance? I'm like, it's not even that bad. There wasn't even really a big scratch on it. So we just avoided that whole thing. But he was my 57th or 70 something episode. I was like, holy shit, it's you. What are like, the odds of that happening? That's I insane. was looking in my rear view. I swear to you, this is true too. That's the funny thing is I was looking in my rear view and I, I, I saw a woman. So I'm like, I'm going to get out of the car and I'm just aggressive. Like, I'm just, I'm always going to beat the shit out of her. I was just like, I'm upset. I want to yell. I want to be like, why the hell, you know, this whole thing. I get out of the car and then out of the passenger seat is my, is, is my buddy. And I'm like, Jesse. And I look over to the girl and she's like, do you need my insurance card? I was like, no, 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 no. He's like, dude, that's crazy. I was like, right. Like we just got to a car accident and we just went on our ways. Yeah. I, I had karma come back. For me one time um when i was like 18 i had somebody rear end me at a yellow light but it wasn't it wasn't like bad like my, there wasn't really any damage to my car at all it didn't mess up my alignment like none of that their car really wasn't damaged um so i didn't i was like whatever it's like i was like 18 i was like i gotta go to work I'm on my way to work i'm not just not gonna mess with this right now and um Years later, I was in an incident where I did the same thing. I rear-ended somebody at a yellow light, and karma came back around, and they was don't worry about it. Oh, I think it's. it's, I think karma's real. Yeah, that's what I say. I'm (laughs) like, I I never say like I'm a good person or a bad person. Just put put good energy out there a little bit. Like when it comes to like giving somebody a ride home, you know, if I see a person from a store or whatever, like. I had a uh, thing in a couple past episodes. I was mentioning a toy I got from Happy Meals or like from a Happy Meal toy from McDonald's from like last year. The guy was at the drive through. I was like, I got a Happy Meal toy. He's like, you're in your 20s. I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, shit. He just tossed me out of Happy Meal toys for Lion King. And then um, saw the dude walking home one night from Food Lion. He got a new job during coronavirus. And I gave him a ride home because it was like 1 a.m. I was like, might as well. And I gave this elderly guy a ride home, dropped him off. And he was like, man, a lot of people wouldn't stop and give rides because hitchhiking is illegal now. So I'm like, dude, I was stuck at one point in my life at one o'clock in the morning wearing board shorts and a hoodie walking about a 45 minute walk or run really from my gym, which I was on my way to during a snowstorm. So I was freezing my ass off and still heading to the gym to work out. 
because I was just so pissed off and I was hoping somebody would come pick me up, giving my hitchhiking thumb for someone to pick me up. Cop came over on in a state trooper, pulled over and said, hey, you're wearing a black hoodie, man. You're like, you're going to get hit. He goes, try and get home safe. It drove off. I'm like, give me a fucking ride home. <laughs> fucking ride. Oh, geez. So it was like, I wanted to make sure that never happened. Like I, I've done it recently, the person with the rainstorm. Um, it was, it was just rain came out of nowhere. Dude was riding his bike to McDonald's. I said, Hey man, hop in, give you a ride. I don't care. Like it's that whole concept of you just got to do it and really not expect anything in return, but make sure your conscience is clear on the fact of I've seen a person on a bike that I just missed in my car at two o'clock in the morning. And then next thing I know, the next day I had read a headline, a kid got killed at four o'clock in the morning on his bike. It was a hit and run. And I was the same kid I just had missed a couple hours prior. It's a scenario where it's like, it might happen. It might not happen, but at least keep your conscience clear that you tried your best. And you did like, as long as you even have that thought of maybe I should turn around and help that person do it. I've done that before. Um, like seen people with car trouble and turned around and like gone back, stuff like that. Um, again I, I like you said karma is very good and sometimes stuff like that comes back like i when i was like again 18 or 19 or something like that i was at a party with some friends and they sorry my dog was scratching at my door very badly um so i i had a ended up leaving at some point i was very intoxicated and couldn't go home um they ended up leaving at some point and they took my car and went home and left me there i was so pissed the next morning when i woke up and i wanted to go home and um like i was trying to call my friends it was still like i woke up pretty early um and like nobody was picking up their phones and like, I wanted to go home. I was like, I don't want to stay at this random person's house who I didn't really know. I was just there. Uh, and I started walking home. And this guy uh, and his son pulled over in their truck on the side of the road. And they're like, hey, hop in. Uh, that was so great. Because it was like a few miles back to my back to my apartment at that point. Um, I think people really worry, know, it, it's people worry way too much about like, what, 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 whatever, what, what the world wouldn't do that for me. The world wouldn't do that for you. It was like, well, if you keep thinking like that, then you're not going to be the person that's going to help that person that's saying the same damn thing. So it's like, just yeah. put the energy out there. I've never had anything get paid forward for me. Never in my life. No, I've never went to any fast food or any type of place where someone's like, oh, the person in front of you paid for you, but I've done it for someone <laughs> behind me. I've done so many other things. It's like, just don't expect anything in return. You don't have to always expect the payout. Yeah. It all comes back, like helping people with the cars, the same thing. I was, it was raining once and I got stalled out at a light and uh, somebody pulled over and helped me push my car into a parking lot somewhere out of the rain. Like, I, I think there are a lot of, there are a lot of really great people in the world. And I think a lot of it gets glossed over because we don't really talk about it a lot or people like me we don't share it's not like we share those stories with millions of people those are just stories views. that happen in our yeah those are just stories that happen in our day-to-day -day lives that never make it out into the into the world where people get to see the good things that people do on a day-to-day -day basis for people they don't know you're telling me a cop that gives a guy a pass on a speeding ticket who said he's not going to speed again isn't going to be the number one YouTube hit of the series. Are you, are you serious? <laughs> Is that the logic we're going with? Right. What, what, uh, what, what it used to be the, it used to be what sex sells, but now it's making people angry cells. It's all started with world star hip hop. Once they let that door open up, I saw a girl get hit in the head with a shovel that it all fucking changed. <laughs> I told my teacher, Mr. Krantz, I'll give his name. I don't care. Um, we're watching. We had we had a class with computers in it. So you're already done as a teacher. You're screwed. Um, <laughs> so we're I was we just watched bum fights and stuff on the TV or on the computer. 
And then um, I told him it was the video Sharkeisha was the video at the time where it was a girl like kicking a girl in the face. Sharkeisha, don't kick her. And I was like, <laughs> and this is when I learned about Craigslist. And my buddy's like, dude, there's this guy selling services to punch you in the balls on Craigslist. I was like, what is Craigslist? He goes, <laughs> just check it out. And I was like, Mr. Krantz, I bet you 20 bucks or I bet you the rest of this class you let us use the computers so without complaining or trying to minimize our videos while we're watching it, even though we're going to watch whatever. This is like time movie 4K and all this was big, like you free online movie watchers. We would just I would watch. I watched Lucy. I watched all those things just in class. And um, I was like, bet you the rest of this class or whatever we can play on the computers. If there's a guy on Craigslist that will come to your house and let and punch you in the balls for a certain amount of money. He goes, that doesn't exist. I said, okay, typed it on Craigslist, showed it to him, it was a picture of a dude's <laughs> nut. Teacher walks over and goes, damn, really? And I'm like, yeah, the world's messed up, isn't it? And he goes, yeah, a little bit. And I, that, that was it, we just played the rest of the day on like Max Games or whatever you wanted to on computers. It's so, it's so crazy. It's such a different way to grow up. Because, I mean, the, the internet was a thing when I was a kid. It was a thing that was becoming more common in people's households. Um, people using AOL Instant Messenger and, and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I remember trying to turn that on at 2 o'clock in the morning at my grandma's house. Oh, like, oh trying to be sneaky. Like, no. Bob, <laughs> where's the mute button? It's like, there's no mute. There's no I mute. Put a towel over it. <laughs> Just death, just the sound of death. I would play this backyard soccer game constantly on the computer. And like, aren't you supposed to be doing something for your school, like study island or whatever it is? Like, you're like, there's like 50 quizzes on there. You've only completed three and they're at like 50%. And I'm like, yeah, I'll get to them. And then I just had my really <laughs> smart friend come over. I was like, hey, let's go to my grandparents' house for the weekend. We get to go. She, they, we work at a, they work at a water park. So it was like, fuck, we get free passes into Jesus. the park. I was like, so that's our whole day. So the whole day at the water park. And then at the night, I was like, all right, so the real reason you're here is because I need your help with Study Island. <laughs> and he would like finish all my tests for me where they like, would come back after the weekend. Like, you got A's on all your tests. And then I took the final exam and bombed the shit out of Oh, me. no. Where was all, I thought you were I, you, like, oh my God, he really is smart. Then I take the final exam. Like, no, he's not nope. at all. He got <laughs> someone to do it for him. Yeah. You know, you're smart in other ways. <laughs> it sucks because I took, I just got onto my study island like a month ago as like a joke. I'm going to see how smart I was compared to back then. Yeah. I was completing that shit. Like it was nothing. I felt like, oh my God, imagine my intelligence in my brain now <laughs> compared to in my body back then. I would have been a hellion. It's uh, you always always wish you could go back and still have still retain the things that you know now, but go back to maybe right before high school. That'd be I so felt, dangerous. I felt like in eighth grade, I did the mistake of um, I was trying to learn how to use the oven, and this is actually what kind of kept me from learning it for so long. Mostly was like all my food items were microwavable. So it was like, there was no point in learning it. But like, I just learned it like a couple months ago, the oven, like how to use it. So I've been cooking chicken like a motherfucker. Um, <laughs> but in eighth grade, I grabbed a tray out of the oven with oh, just Jesus. my hand. And I grabbed it and it's like, it take a couple seconds. Like I lift it up and go to put on the counter and I let it go. And I got burned my hand like bad. And um, so I just, I just did that the other day. Fuck the oven. <laughs> I grabbed I grabbed the oven mitt and I had it and everything. And I grabbed the one thing, but the side was too heavy. And it went like that. And I went to go grab it with my other hand. And before like my brain stopped myself from grabbing it again <laughs> oh, to no. burn it, but burning water came out and hit me right in the hand. And that fucking hurt even more to where I dropped the whole pan with my other hand. So I was like, it still happens. You still make the mistakes. Even though you're an adult, you're still a person and people make mistakes. <laughs> oh yeah. Sometimes items make mistakes though. One time I, I did not realize there was a hole in my oven mitt. Oh, Jesus. I stuck in there and it was all fine and dandy until the, the hot metal just went right where that hole was. <laughs> Back in my high school days when I was getting stoned, I remember going to Thanksgiving at my grandma's house and she was like, carry all these trays in there and set the food out. Cause she would just make a bunch of food and set it out. I'm sitting there. She's got oven mitts on. She goes to hand me a tray and I'm not wearing oven mitts and I go to grab uh -huh. it. And as I was about to grab it, I looked and my brain went, is there a reason why she's wearing oven mitts? 
<laughs> and my mind's like, maybe it's hot. Is that I wouldn't, I would try to be safe with it and grab oven mitts. And that's literally the inner monologue in my head. And my brain grabbed up oven mitts and put them on. She's like, she's like, she goes, yep. And she wasn't even paying attention, like, wasn't even questioning anything. She was moving too quick. So I was like, she would have easily known if I was stoned if she wasn't so busy. Cause I was like, sitting <laughs> like, I'm ready for, I'm ready to help. Then my right. brain's like, hey, she's wearing something. It's like wearing <laughs> armor. Like you're wearing that for a reason. Thanksgiving was never as good until you you discovered marijuana. Or pie. I didn't have pie until I was in my 20s. But that, I, like Thanksgiving's good, but going to Thanksgiving stoned is just so good. <laughs> That's a recipe for disaster. No, it's a West, it's, I, okay. I have a big Southern family, so it's, that's just so, the way to ease your anxiety. So much greasy fruit or uh, fruit, uh, greasy food, you know, all, all the macaroni and cheese that has all the butter and, and cheese in it and the deviled eggs and ham, turkey, chicken, and like everything, the biscuits and gravy. Like I, the first time I ever went to one of those things high, I, I ate food. Uh, way more than I'd ever eaten at any other Thanksgiving. And, and that's when I found out that one of my cousins also smoked too. And it just made Thanksgiving so much better to know that there was also someone else there that was with me doing the same thing. <laughs> I, I realized like, just like over the summer that like weed is a nostalgia smell to me because my uncle smoked it constantly. And I always thought they were just going out on the porch to smoke a cigarette and every time they would come in, I thought that was just their scent. Like everybody has a scent. <laughs> so I'm like, right. So I went to go see my uncle like over the summer and I saw him and I was like, why am I thinking immediately of Thanksgiving and Christmas and like grandma's house? <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? And he's like doing a bong rip. And I'm like, oh my God, oh. weed is a nostalgia smell to me. <laughs> and he goes, dude, that's hilarious. I'm like, no, it's not. Every time you smoke <laughs> weed, I think of my grandparents' house. Like that's so bad. That's hysterical, though, at the same time. No, that's ah, funny. You just didn't want to be the person that ended up having to take food home to someone else. Like, I have to take this food home, whatever, to, you know, your family member that's sick. Because then it's like you're in the car. Somebody didn't wrap it right. You take a sharp turn. My brand new Kia, uh, when I got it, I spilled mashed potatoes, gravy all into the, the carpet of my car. And it reeked for like a month. And I was like, dude. Out of all things, you had greasy ass turkey and stuff that just got soaked into the seat of my car. Like it's just the worst. It was it was never a good time. That was always the worst thing about Thanksgiving is is having to take everything that's been cooked to someone else's house. Then you get I mean, if you're lucky, you just took it home to your own house and then you just ate it for like five days. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and and um because you would always have to, everyone's piling in the car and like, all right, you're holding this and you're holding this. And now I got to ride for like 30 minutes with this hot ass plate on my lap. Dude, at that point, I'm just like, yo, just put your feet on top of it lightly and just <laughs> hold it there. Because like I, I, I did that one time I had sat there with like something with gravy in it in my lap because like the seats were full. You couldn't just buckle it in or something like, oh, for safety. No, it was like. Then it spilled on me. I literally grabbed the thing and threw it out. And then like my dad was like, where's my uh, take home stuff? Did She said she made me a tray. I'm like, <laughs> yo, it ruined my shorts, dude. Like I, that's on you, man. That is on you. And on that you. is on the driver for hitting a speed bump faster than they're supposed to. Karma. Uh, back to back to karma. No. It all leads back. Well, look. Nick, you've given me enough of your time, man. Is there, can you want to promote your page, promote where people can find character arcana? You didn't think I'd know that word, did you? Ooh, no, it's a, it's a good one. No, you guys, uh, you can find us on Twitter at character arcana. You can find us on Instagram at character underscore arcana. Um, we've got a website too. We are, our parent company is called character arc with a K um it's literally just like it it's what we started doing originally and then we were like oh well let's do D, D. what can we do to like change our name a little bit for D D centric stuff and it was like 
character arc on a character arc a character arc on a, it was you know so it's perfect so we do still have some stuff under character arc that's interesting most of our character arc stuff is just um it's non D related so we have two of our guys that review movies um they used to go to a movie theater every week and see like a new movie out in movie theaters but obviously we don't do that anymore um we don't talk about movies anymore <laughs> oh we they still do movies um but there's just stuff that comes out you know online that's yeah. new um netflix original stuff like that um and then we have a podcast that we talk about anime sometimes which is which is pretty fun um i'm on that one that's me and two of the other members um and sometimes i'll go on the movie one that was that one's a little rare for me um but the dnd is character arcana um it's uh like i said we have 12 episodes you can find us on spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, all that stuff we have 12 episodes of campaign one and campaign two is actually going to come out this month but we have episode zero coming out next monday i believe the 16th um which is just like an intro to everything it's just where we're announcing our characters and kind of talking about a little bit of like world setup and then episode one is going to launch monday november 30th uh, so check that out if you're into D&D. The way we play D&D is more of non-traditional. Uh, like when you play D&D, what do you think of? I've never played D&D. Oh, that's right. Uh, so our, you, you probably envision something similar to like that scene in Stranger Things then um, yeah, where the kids are sitting the at the table yeah. uh, and you know, you've got miniature pieces and a game board and stuff like that. We... We, we do what's called theater of the mind. Um, and, it, and I have stuff for me, like I have a screen that has information on it and I have cards with character information on it and stuff like that. But we, we don't use any boards or pieces. Um, the whole time we're playing, we're just sitting there with each other with our dice drinking. And, and I'm trying to create a visual world for them to imagine as we talk about what's going on. So relying um, more on creativity rather than right. actual pieces. Um, so for us, it's more of a collaborative storytelling role playing experience that we try to do a comedic take on versus this hardcore rules driven board game. That sounds a lot more enjoyable. It, it's I've done both. And it, it's more fun for me. The the board game aspect does have its cool parts because you can see things on a map and you know, oh well i have this many spaces and then this many spaces it's like hero escape um, it was easier for people that couldn't imagine it right uh but you know for us for this for what we're doing with the podcast medium it it's it makes everything flow a lot easier um and it, and it overall i think it it's more fun in general for us and now you have to take us out as your cronk voice all right well I really enjoyed being here talking to everybody this evening. I hope you enjoyed some of us. And don't forget to check out Gilroy, who's one of our characters in Campaign 2. Soon to be a crowd favorite. Yeah, guys, uh, check me out in Campaign 2. Gilroy Luchtervik is my last name. Um, I am a fighter class, uh, and I'm handy with a sword. I just <laughs> want to give that kid a wedgie so bad. <laughs>